Welcome to Jazz Time. Jazz Time is an online store that buys, sells, and trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. If you like this watch, click the link in the description below to buy it at the lowest price anywhere online. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Rolex Daytona Cosmograph Rose Gold on Chocolate Dial on Oyster Flex Bracelet, reference 116515LN. I'm going to talk to you about the bezel, the dial, the case, the bracelet, the movements, try it on, and give you my thoughts. So let's start. This is the Rolex Daytona. It's arguably Rolex's most iconic line in terms of sports watches. Now, Rolex does have a lot of iconic watches, the Submariner, the GMT, but we're talking about sports watches, purely sports watches. I might not say iconic, but I could say the most prestigious. I could definitely say the most expensive because the Daytona of all the sports line that Rolex makes is the most expensive. In fact, they made one that was around $100,000 or more, and that one was the Platinum Daytona. There's no other sports watch that Rolex makes that's going to be in that price range. And of course, Rolex reserves its most precious material, Platinum, and its open case back for the Daytona. So you can call that Rolex has invested heavily into this line, and that's what you end up with, which is the Rolex Daytona. There are a lot of different variations of the Daytona, though. There's steel, there's steel and gold, all gold, and now what you see here is the Oyster Flex. Now, the Oyster Flex came about, I want to say, about 10 or so years ago, something like mid-2015, 2017, something like that. And at that time, having a watch on a rubber strap was not revolutionary because Admars had been doing that and Patek had done too. But for Rolex, it was revolutionary, and they put their first rubber strap on their most prestigious sports watch, which was the Daytona. And so that's how you have the Oyster Flex Daytona, and I'll get into it in a little bit, but let's start with the case right now. The case is a 40mm case, and it's an Oyster case. And what makes it an Oyster case? Well, if you look at the lines on the lugs, it's smooth, as opposed to on the Submariner, which has sharp edges. So it has an Oyster case, and the Oyster case on this watch is made of rose gold. Now, Rolex has its own foundries where they make their own gold. So this is a mixture of copper, gold, palladium, platinum, and a couple other things. However, they mix it so that it will stay forever rose gold. And that's actually important because rose gold can actually fade into a yellow gold over several years. But Rolex claims, and I believe them, that their rose gold will stay forever rose gold, hence why they call it Ever Rose Gold. Now, the case is made of a monoblock middle case, and that means it's a single piece of rose gold with a screw-down case back and a winding crown, which means it does not allow water in. So you can take this watch wherever you want to go. Go diving, go surfing, go swimming, do whatever you want to do in the water, and it's going to keep the water out. As long, of course, you keep those pusher screws in and the crown screwed down. So that's the case. Now let me turn it on its side. One good thing, actually, I noticed about this watch, even though it's a chronograph, which is quite a complicated movement, is that it's not that thick. In fact, it's not any thicker than a Datejust, which makes me wonder why the Datejust is even as thick as it is around 12 millimeters, and the chronograph is also 12 millimeters. So what's all that space doing on a Datejust? I'm not quite sure. Probably they just want to keep the thickness around 12 millimeters because 12 millimeters is really the most comfortable size, if you ask me. Actually, when the watch is too thin, it does feel a bit flimsy. There's almost like there's no substance to it, but when it's too thick, it could be too cumbersome. So I would probably say that it's probably because of the practicality. And Rolex is known for making watches that are very practical. In fact, you could wear them in almost every situation. That's really what they're known for, making watches that people want to wear, myself included. Anyways, so this is a 40mm watch. Now, that's not a huge size. It's not a small size. It's more of a standard size. Some people are saying, hey, I wish the Daytona would be bigger. I don't agree. I think the Daytona having 
I don't agree. I think Daytona having a racing heritage, it has to have these smooth lines and be sleek and be thin. You can't have it blocky. Imagine like a car. That's kind of what I see when I see this Daytona. They keep it slim and I think it looks great as it is. In fact, I love this watch. So that is the case. Now it has these pushers, which makes it actually look even bigger than that 40 millimeters, which I might add. And these pushers, let me actually also tell you, for whatever reason, Rolex makes it so that you have to screw and unscrew these pushers. I think probably because they don't want you to press it when you're underwater and accidentally flood the movement and destroy the watch. So they make you literally screw it in and out but it adds some length to the watch and it gives you some bulk. It makes the watch look a bit sporty and also a bit bigger. And I think it looks pretty cool with all these buttons, even though you're not really using them. It's just like a race car with all these buttons and things. Moving on, so let's talk about the bezel. Now the bezel is a monoblock cherochrome bezel and it has a molded tachymeter scale on it. What does that mean? Uh, basically, it's a ceramic bezel, and the ceramic bezel is all the way around. Now, on the newer version, as of 2023, they released the newer Daytona, and those edges of it are surrounded in gold. In this one, the entire part of that bezel is ceramic. And why is that good to have a ceramic bezel? Because it doesn't scratch easily, and it will also not fade. So it will maintain this look forever, which is important, right? I mean, it looks nice. Now let's talk about the dial. The dial here is a chocolate index dial. Now, what is so special about this? Well, first of all, uh, they don't make this dial anymore. So this is a discontinued dial, at least as of 2023. They might bring it back later, but as of 2023, it is discontinued. No more but you can buy it at jazztime.com. If you want to buy it at the lowest price anywhere online, click the link in the description below and buy it, which is why we make these videos, by the way. We're not just making it for my health. So please, if you are watching this and you are thinking of buying it, don't go anywhere else. Do yourself a favor, save yourself a lot of money, and get yourself an authentic watch. Go to jazztime.com. So the dial is chocolate, and Rolex made the Oyster Flex rose gold with several different variations. They made it with sun dust, they made it with meteorites, a white dial, a black dial, they even made it with a baguette, and <laughs> I don't know why, and they made it pink at one point as well, but this one is a chocolate index. Now they also made a chocolate Arabic, this is a chocolate index. I happen to think that the chocolate index is better just because you can see it at night. Now look at the hour markers. The hour markers are index markers, and let me shine a light at it. You can actually see the watch at nighttime, which is a very important practical aspect of a watch. Let's say you're wearing the watch at night, or for a dinner party, or a theater, and it's nighttime. Some of us just don't carry our phones when we go out to socialize. So what do you do when you want to tell the time? Well, you need to have an hour marker that can be seen at night, which is what we have here. That's not what makes it special though, but that's what makes it better than the Arabic one, which you could not see that light. It does not have that luminescence. To me, it is very important to be able to read my watch at night. And I think the chocolate dial really looks fantastic on its own. In fact, yeah, I would have to say this probably looks best paired with that rose gold. When you have that rose gold on a chocolate dial, it just, it really pops. And it makes it look for a fantastic watch. And these black subdials, it just looks really smooth, really good. And I love that they put this in Daytona red. They didn't splash it everywhere, just trying to make it all raced out. But they just put it on the one word of importance, Daytona and they put it in red. A beautiful touch. I love it. So <laughs> anyway, that is the dial. Now let's go ahead and talk about the bracelet. Now you might think, what's there to talk about? It is a rubber bracelet. You know what? I have to tell you of all the rubber straps. Now let's compare AP Oddmars Piguettes. Their offshore rubber straps are detachable. You can take them off. Or let's talk about Richard Mill, which has vented ones, so which are not bad. And if you look at Patek, which has the Aquanaut rubber strap, which I think is probably the worst of all, and you compare that to the Rolex one, 
even though the Rolex one is probably the cheapest in terms of how much it costs, it is actually the best. Now, why? Well, because it's made up of two flexible curved metal blades, one in each bracelet section, over molded with a high performance black elastomer. And for optional comfort, the Oyster Bracelet is equipped with cushions, these air gills on the inner side that allows air to escape and have the rubber strap not exactly sit flat on your skin. In fact, it kind of sits above your skin, so only the vented inner sides are touching. And even that allows the air to go in and out. And these flexible curved metal blades, they actually make the rubber strap keep its shape. And if you look at the other high-end brands, for example, Audemars Piguet, they make a very good rubber strap. But you know what? It doesn't have any metal in it. And it can, over time, in fact, it will, over time, warp and distort, kind of look funny, and it sits completely flat on your skin. So over time, on a hot day, you'll start to sweat, and it'll get sticky, and it won't feel great. But the Rolex one? That will never happen. You can wear it on any day and it will always feel perfect. I am not kidding. I'm not just trying to push this watch. It is amazing how awesome this bracelet is. It is my favorite rubber strap bracelet of any watch. It is the best. And also Rolex makes a very cool oyster lock safety clasp, which I think is also great in that it's an ingenious system. It can be adjusted with a glide lock extension that can extend the size of your bracelet without having to use any tools. Why is that important? Well, because often your hands, believe it or not, they change size throughout the day. Not much, five millimeters, a few millimeters, but that's enough to make your arms sticky and you can simply change the size of the bracelet using the glide lock system like this with no tool. And if you compare that, for example, to the Audemars Piguet or the Patek Philippe Aquanaut, you can't do that. They are a fixed length. There is no changing it. And if you look at the Richard Mill, yeah, you could undo the buckle and you could move it out to a different hole. Okay, so I give Richard Mill a pass on that one because you can actually change the bracelet. But on the AP, actually, I guess on the AP, you could just change the strap or select a different hole. So. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a pass on that one, AP. But on the Rolex, it just looks seamless. You can't actually see any holes on it because it's all on the underside. So that's why I think Rolex does a great job of making their watches very, very practical, and they're always designed so well. All right, that's the bracelets. Now let's talk about the movement. You can't see the movement here, and I believe it's a 4031 something like that, but you can't really see the movement, so I'm not really sure that it matters that much to talk about. I believe that it has a power reserve of 48 hours. It's precise to plus or minus two seconds a day. Okay, anyways, that's, that's the movement. Let's try it on. I am six feet tall, 200 pounds, and as you see, it does not look too small on me. It does not look too big. It's an absolutely perfect fit. I am a huge fan of the Daytona. I like that it's only, it's not the only one, it, but it has a few other sports watches that is the Oyster Flex. The Yachtmaster 2 is also on the Oyster Flex, and so is the Daytona. And I like it better on the rubber strap because it gives it the really sporty look to it. Now, when would you be wearing this? Why would you buy this watch? Well, you would buy it if you want a really baller watch that is not going to look too showy, because it came off with a gold bracelet and it would be very in your face, very flashy, but on a rubber strap, it dulls everything down. It looks much more subdued and it still looks very elegant and I think it just looks fantastic. It's a sporty watch on a rubber strap and it can actually compete with the other very top end watches such as Audemars Piguet Offshore even could compare it to the Aquanaut. It's much more robust. If you have to get in and out of it, as in sell it or trade it, it's much easier to do so than with the other watches. So it's a fantastic watch. What else can I say? If you want to buy it, go to jazztime.com or click the link in the description below.
If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in jazztime, plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.